Awesome, welcome to another episode of the wonderful world of Waikato Sheds. We've got a special one today where we've been invited by Mike and he's going to talk us through how he built his own kit set shed. Uh, how did you find Waikato Sheds and how, why did you choose us? So I had a, a recommendation from my neighbour, he built a shed and he said they're really great and what appealed to me is that they're built uh, to a similar level as what a house is, a level two structure, so nice and strong, they can handle the big winds and yeah, they're really good. So the best thing is we probably go and have a look and see how good it is. Awesome, let's go on inside. You'll notice a beautiful sectional door by Garador and Waikato Door Specialists. Cheers guys. So the shed is, uh, is 14 metres long by 6.5 metres wide. It's 4.5 metres at the peak and the door opening's up at 3.3 metres. So plenty of room to store old things. Awesome. So. <laughs> Oh, hello. G'day, Sean. How are oh, you going? Yeah, good, Mike. How are you? Great. Come well, in. This shed's looking a bit different since I was last in here. It's, oh, no, it's built up quite a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's actually standing up now. Yeah, <laughs> cool. it is indeed. So, uh, obviously, it was a big job building. How'd you find it? Yeah, it was a big job. At the start, it was, uh, you know, for a DIY. I'm not a, I'm not a builder or anything like that, so it was a bit daunting at the start. But once you get into it, uh, there were great instructions yep. and good help. Everything was... Um, made to measure and fitted nicely so it was I found it actually quite quite easy to build but a, a real accomplishing project. Yeah so. I've, I've heard the same from a lot of kit set clients as well like it's quite an accomplished um, accomplishment to build something like this and obviously big kids Lego set isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah exactly so we might as well start off obviously some clients are going to need some certain equipment and tools and stuff is there anything that you'd recommend or we'd go have a look at? Yep sure come on down. Sweet. So Mike, I'm on site all the time. I see all the builders, I see them using their tools, Kyra and the boys, Paul, Stan and the boys. I don't know what half these things do. What did you find the most important and obviously, what did everything do? Well, I think to start with, most of them are straightforward DIY tools. There's nothing sort of special. So I did treat myself to a few extra tools, but um, mainly the simple ones are a good hammer drill, some good concrete bits to put in the foundations. Yep, yep. And of course, what everyone will have is a level, making sure your building's all nice and square. Uh, squares, tape measures, um, just making sure when you measure everything's accurate. Uh, good socket driver, so you can put in all the bolts, because as you'll be aware, the shed's actually all bolted together for the main structure, making it nice and strong. Um, and then a variety of just um, corded power tools, cordless power tools to put in all the tech screws, uh, G-clamps, holding together the frame while you're putting it together, I found them really useful. Uh, and when cutting the metal and with the swarf, blowing all the swarf off, because it's quite important to get that all off and so you don't sort of get rust spots. And the uh, trusty angle grinder there for cutting all the knee braces as well. Yeah. And uh, this was the, uh, the extra tool I treated myself to, the nibbler. The nibbler, so what does a nibbler do? Well, the nibbler is, is really handy to um, cut out the holes for the windows, oh, yep. trim the edges of the roof yep. um, to the angles. So like your end wall sheets, so obviously they're going to be a bit longer, so do you just cut them to yep. suit? Yep, so I just use the nibbler to cut them to suit and it's a real easy tool to use. I did have a, um, I've got a, what you need also, is um, tin snips, yep. left and right handed ones, so you can cut to the left or cut to the right, mm -hmm. which are really good and handy, but a nibbler can make the job really easy. Mm -hmm. So. You wouldn't just use a grinder? No, oh no, definitely no. not. A, um, a, a grinder seems a lot simpler, yep. but it heats up the metal, damages the coating, puts swarf all over the place. So you're better, if you want to do a good job, either use your tin snips or um, treat yourself to a nibbler, mm -hmm. and uh, that works well. But if you're going to cut the knee braces, then you use a grinder for that. Cool, so obviously something we say here at Waikato Sheds all the time, our sheds are built for strength by design, and as you can see, this has got some serious strength built into it. This is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fall over in the wind. It's going to be here to last a chance of time. Um, any tips of anything on the inside, really, that you felt these guys would want to know? I think at the start, um, like I said, it's a bit daunting. But once you, just because the structure is a reasonable size, but everything's measured and labelled, which I found really good. I get a sheet of plans from Waikato Sheds. I knew what bit went where. 
They tell me what bolt goes where. So I found, given everything was labelled, I just sat down and read the plans the evening before and then sort of got into it the next morning and that made it, that made it really straightforward. Always a good place to start, eh? Look over the plans in detail and then if you had any questions, you'd be on the phone to me or Shane. Um, we're always here to help, aren't we? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's, Joel's cut it out. So obviously it sounds quite easy to put together. Maybe it happens over the weekend. How long did it take for you to put this up? Uh, well, Sean, a bit longer than a weekend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, in all honesty, it probably took me maybe two, two and a half months to put it up. Yep. I, I didn't work on it full time, uh, which is a good thing about a kit set. You get parts that arrive. I got the frames and that gave me a bit of time to plan to put up the frames and that probably took me couple of weeks to put up the frames and then by the time you put on all the girts another few weekends and then more material arrives like all the uh, the roofing the coverings and then you sort of work your way around so it does it does take a bit of time it depends how much of a hand you get from your mates um, my, I was lucky my wife gave me a hand to do the roofing and the cladding so that sped things along but is that something that you would particularly say you needed a hand with, like stuff on the roof or stuff? Is there any areas of the shed that you felt, man, I need a second pair of hands here? Or oh, for the roof, yes. Yep. Um, for someone to pass up the material to hold bits of the um, of the Watergate covering and those type of things. So, but for a lot of this, just putting up the structure when you're just bolting stuff, um, making it up on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, you can do that by yourself. Awesome. But it is nice to have a hand. Yeah, did you find, obviously weather as well, it comes into play? Did you have to plan around certain times of the day to do certain things? Was it hard to do stuff in certain places or? Yeah, it was. Uh, we live in quite a windy spot yep. in which you don't think about these things. So when putting on these uh, Watergate coverings, you just think that you lay them on, <laughs> but then the wind catches them. So it's like a massive sheet. So that I found uh, getting some big magnets and oh. duct tape to hold down the sheets uh, while you're putting on, it's really handy. Yeah, it's a smart tip, that one. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was very helpful. Cool. So, you got some lovely joinery items here, just from City Glass down here, down the road. You know, we like to keep things local, New Zealand made here in New Zealand. Show me how it went in, what happened? Well, best to have a look from the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so putting, it, putting in the windows, what I did first, Sean, was I had the, the wall clad selected where I wanted to put them, cut myself a, a, a small hole and that's where I used my nibbler and then nibbled round for the shape of the window. And I actually, where I wasn't so good with a nibbler, being a bit of DIY, I cleaned them up with the, with the snips, Nice. slotted in the window. I had to build a frame on the inside, yep. uh, which is all in the, in the plans, and then a nice little flashing that goes on the top. So they look like windows just in a house. Yeah, yeah. And they are the same as what goes in a house. So they're, they're really good and they're super weather tight. Yep. Yeah, brilliant. So the flashings, they're all obviously custom made as well, obviously exactly how you want them. Yep. Um, they turn up pretty quickly. Yep, so I had my flashings within a, within a week. Yep. So I went round, there's a nice flashing on the corner here. I measured up the, uh, up the flashings, they turned up, and you can decide the dimensions, how big you want them, so you get nice big flashings to make it watertight, yep. and they fit, they fit really nicely. So shout out to Metalcraft Roofing in Hamilton here, obviously, Awesome job on the flashings. They do a perfect job every time. Anything's wrong, they'll replace it for you. Any scratches, little dents, we don't want your shed looking like that. We want a perfect shed for the Waikato sheds. That's nice T-rib cladding here as well. Awesome option here. Just really suits the shed. Yeah, no, it looks great. Awesome. So Mike, New Zealand Steel made all these lovely portals for us. One thing I can notice is they are quite tall. How did you find working at heights? was a bit scary to start with, to be honest, but I just got myself the right safety equipment. So I got myself a harness, a rope, uh, a nice extension ladder, and I picked up some secondhand scaffolding just to keep myself safe because there's be nothing worse than falling off the roof. So, and getting the right equipment made the job a lot easier and a lot quicker. So yeah, it's all about safety, eh? You don't want to be falling from heights. It's all about health and safety. Looking after yourself is obviously the main priority, but then building something like this is just as awesome, but you want to be able to use it. Yep, and it makes it go quicker too, if you've got the right equipment and you're feeling safe doing the job, so. Exactly, so obviously, a1 Bobcats and Concrete did the concrete pad as well? Yep, they did, and they did a, a fantastic job. Yeah, I see, you, I see you painted it. Yep, yeah. so I put on a, um, a two-pack epoxy paint on the floor, and it's brilliant. It's 
got a big heavy truck sitting on it. There's mm -hmm. no cracks in the concrete, so it's a top job. They're some of the best in the business, that's why they're with us here at Waikato Sheds. You know we like to make sure the concrete pads are just primo, no problems at all. So lastly, obviously, Connect here. They supply all the fastenings for all the sheds that we do at Waikato Sheds. Um, how is it all put together? Is it just screwed in, bolted? No, so it is for the main portal structures. If you look up there, there's, uh, there's big bolts holding them together. Uh, it's bolted onto the floor as well. Uh, so the main structure is all bolted, making it nice and stiff and strong. And then the roof are all colour steel um, tech screws. So, awesome. Yeah. So Mike, obviously there's a few little finishing touches that you did to the shed. Um, there's a little bit of electrical through here and obviously some ply on the walls. Talk us about that. Is it just a personal opinion to put the ply on the walls and was the electrics hard to get through the shed? So we'll just start with the ply. The ply was, I wanted to do that, personal preference, but what was really neat is you can screw the ply straight to the girts. Mm. So it looks nice and tidy and it was simple to do. I didn't have to put framing in behind. And in terms of the electrical, I got in an electrician to give me a hand to do that, uh, but it was really easy to run it, the wires all across the girts, which made it simple. Electrician put in the um, control box at the end and uh, an inspector came and gave it the final sign off. Sweet. So yeah. easy as that? Yep, very simple. Nice work. All right, Mike, thanks for letting us come and have a tour of your shed. It's an amazing product you've got here. Would you do it again? Oh, I'd definitely do it again. Yep. And I think, you know, thanks for your support, Sean, to make it possible through the building process. Yeah, 100% do it again. The only thing I would do is build bigger, so. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Check out our YouTube channel, like, subscribe. Lots of videos on there. And if you love us that much, come see us down at the Waikato Shed's new office. <laughs>